What is up guys, Sox for one here. We are back with surviving 300 days in the largest mod pack possible in hardcore. However, I have some important news I need to tell you before the video starts. I ended up dying in these 100 days, but I still finished it. If you guys want me just to continue this series as a normal series, like no hardcore, just normal, please hit that like button so I know that you guys really want this series because personally, I've never enjoyed Minecraft so much in my life right now. As you guys know, this mod pack has almost 450 mods, which means multiple planets, so many different biomes, even rubber duckies that turn into demons. As you can see, we barely scratched the surface, like this could literally go on forever. On the other hand, I know some of you will say, oh, you died in hardcore, it's over now. Most of this video was recorded on Twitch, and I'll be streaming this mod pack all the time then, so you can also come there and tell me your opinion on this series. Also, when this video comes down, I'm releasing my own Minecraft server to all my Twitch Prime subs, yay! Just remember to join my Discord so we can give you the IP. But in the end of the day, I hope you guys enjoy the video. It is day 201 and we are back in our fabulous castle. Today we kind of just looked around and got our memories back on what we actually did. A lot of you guys asked before, why are you making the miners dig giant holes in your castle? The plan is we're going to have a multi-level underground area for each of the different mods. That way we can have everything organized and separated and it's going to look really good. It was the next day and it was time to get to work. I had a vision to connect all my arches together like this giant overhead cave thing. In order to do this I had to do a lot of castle maintenance and a lot of random block building I don't know like some sort of artistic feel to it now what happens when you start watching green tutorial after green tutorial you start making art haha <laughs> look at that portal room day 203 we had to put some finishing touches and some adjustments as you guys know portal guns is my main way of transportation so I want this to look like my main entrance that's why it frustrated me how there was the whole left side was uneven to the right side I allowed my brain to breathe for a bit because that was way advanced building that I'm usually capable of. I just kept an eye on my miners progress because I love to see them dig giant holes in the ground. The next day my Twitch chat made me realize how much smarter they are than me. As you guys know anything in this white blocks outline gets mined out. So simply putting the mining quarry one block down so it doesn't mine the top layer so there isn't a giant hazard in the ground. Something so simple will save these miners life because I lost so many souls the last 100 days for falling down these holes. After patching everything up I started extending my portal room because I didn't like the design of the room. Because I was making the room bigger, I had to make a temporary wall so no mobs would come attack me. Yeah, it still needs some work. The next morning, I continue my progress of making a circle behind so it's more like a cave looking structure. The only problem is that do you even understand how hard it is to make a circle in Minecraft? It's impossible. Finally figuring it out, I was able to fill in a floor and that's all I did. It was day 206 and it was time to build some walls. And you know what comes after building a wall? A roof. Just kidding, I didn't have time to build a roof just the walls it was the next day and it was time to make this cave ceiling honestly it was pretty complicated because it was like a circle shape and it you have to make it like cavey and stuff that's all i did for the day and there was still this really weird ugly left side castle that needs to be removed day 2a and i really didn't want to work on no cave portal room anymore right now i was debating with my twitch chat what do you guys want to see me build Beanos. They told me to build Beanos. It took me a while to understand this because it was Bean and Thanos combined. Welp, it was the next day and it was time to start getting materials for Beanos. One of those being red roses because you need red dye to combine with the blue dye to make purple dye. It actually took me a long time to find all those red roses because I needed quite a lot of purple dye. 10 days in and we had enough material to start building Beanos. Mods make things more complicated so I had to make something called a paintbrush in order to turn the wood into a purple color. Little did I realize realized that I only needed one paintbrush, not 200. After spending careful minutes analyzing every single detail of this beautiful creature, I came to a conclusion this will be the biggest Minecraft project in Minecraft history. I started building his layers because we all know that Thanos's that are beans all have layers. Wait, no, those are onions. It was getting quite tall, so I made sure to build a staircase so I could get up and down. And even though it was nighttime, I really wanted to get him done right here and now because I was already up here. That quickly came to a halt because the scorpions that sound like frogs were attacking my miners no even though i made turrets in order to protect the miners it takes them like 4.5 years to kill anything day 211 and i was putting in the final blocks to finally complete binos all he needed now was a mouth art i say arts get picasso out of here whatever mona lisa anything art related get it out of my face this is 
the top of the topness, man. Me and my Twitch chat were both so amazed of what we just created, so we kind of just danced around for the rest of the day. It was day 212, and I now had the willpower to finish off my cave. It was nearly completed, except for this giant hole in the side of the base. I just continued my random block pattern to create this, you know, ruin feel. And I really just continued this the next day, too. The only difference is that I was running out of the moss stone, and it was actually really expensive because I didn't have any seeds to craft it. Day 214, and most of the cave was complete. Now we were just doing, like, the extra decoration stuff. I'll be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of placing random blocks and all. And the ceiling was such a headache because you had to do, like, an arch kind of thing with half slabs and blocks and all. Yeah. And after a hard day's work, it was basically complete. I mean, ignore the giant dirt pillars, but oh my god, it looks good. The next morning, I was so ready to take down these dirt pillars to see how it looks. I just had to do a little more cleanup, like taking out some of the vines and even some light sources. Wow, it was a bit dark, but Grian would be so proud right now. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I actually spent one more day on this and a little bit more the next day. I can finally say that our portal room is basically done. Now we just have to add portals. It was day 218 and I didn't want to do anything about my base and I wanted to go on an adventure. Also, here's one of the workers like whacking at my storage system. I have no idea what he was actually doing, but yeah, I thought it was interesting. It took me a while to get my inventory in check, but the portal guns allowing me to go back to my base anytime makes things a lot easier. And then we sailed for the rest of the day. The next morning, I came across a village and, you know, I just did my trusty thing by eliminating them all. Someone in Twitch chat told me these blocks are important. They're part of a mod called Tinker's Mod and I can make cool things. I even came across a section in the village where it had different books for different mods. I took them all for safekeeping. Look at this book. It's like Harry Potter and stuff. It's called Thomcraft. The next day was more of the same. I lowered the population of the village. I came across the coolest things like trains and stuff. I could make a train station back at home. It took me a while to figure out how to collect them. I just was afraid to break them. A villager finally caught on that I was limiting his entire village. So he went on like auto dispenser mode, man. He was going arrow after arrow. Shortly after ending his life, I just continued my adventure outside the village. I found this chest kind of out in the open, but it looks super suspicious. There was like four pillars around it. I mean, this is a TNT giant bomb if you ask me, but turns out the loot was just terrible. I just kept traveling in one direction and I didn't find anything too crazy except for this really nice looking forest. Who knew a sunset would look so good in Minecraft? I continued my adventure first thing in the morning. Still nothing too interesting except for like this cool lake in this weird biome. I also mined up this dark wood oak land trees because they look really cool. Day 222 started with a bang with this sheep attacking me. Like I didn't even punch it or anything. It was literally a horror movie because the dark lands make everything super dark every 10 seconds. And then it turned even more demonic. Luckily the village police was here to save me. Their aim was so good they could even kill him in the dark. You see that guy just standing on top of that house? Well that's a ninja and he trades ninja stars for copper coins. I quickly portal gun back to my base to get all my copper coins because they were ninja freaking stars man. But as soon as I returned he was already gone. This is so sad. Can we kill the entire village? These door animations is another reason why Minecraft is better than real life. The next day I wanted to leave the village and cross the sea, but that was definitely not going to be an option. Do you see how many mobs are spawning? So I traveled by foot and I came across this cool haystack thing, but the man couldn't offer me anything. After burning down yet another house, I released my rage on these tree people. They might have bullied me in the beginning, but times have changed. I also came across like this cool industrial house. I'm pretty sure we came across a couple already, but they look pretty darn cool. Day 224 and I was done traveling. It was time to empty all my backpacks that were filled to the brim with loot. This also means that we got to start working on our base. And luckily, we had so much room to work with. The only problem with all the workers is that they constantly eat all my food, so I always have a food problem. Day 225, and it was time to start learning about mods. This mod in particular was called Thomcraft, and it was basically the Harry Potter of all the mods. I actually spent several days on this mod because everything is overly complicated. But to sum it up to you, anything that looks like a small dagger gemstone is part of this mod. Now that I had the basic knowledge about Harry Potter Minecraft, the first thing I had to do was build a wand. And of course, I gotta try it out and boom, baby, maximum damage. Yeah, I know, this is actually not how you're supposed to use it, but I thought it was pretty funny. In order to do cool spells and stuff, I have to make a research station, which allows me to craft, I mean, research these new spells. Look how wizardy this crafting table looks. It was day 229, and if I read another wizard book, I would blow out my brains. Instead, I kept my adventure going by slaughtering lots of sheep because I still had a food problem. I even found things 
Thanos sugar cane. I thought this adventure couldn't get any better, but then I found a giant temple. I thought castles were cool. This was a flipping temple. The entire interior was a giant maze filled with different sort of traps and mob spawners. There was even the worst mob of all, cave spiders. Just when I thought things wouldn't get any more interesting, a blood moon was rising. I stayed inside the temple even though this would be extremely dangerous, but then the weirdest thing happened. It was like something was hunting me, dude. I portaled out of there faster than my dad left me. But my curiosity made me just go back in, so we explored the rest of this cave while in a blood moon. I think hate is a really strong word, but I hate cave spiders. I spent the entire night searching through this temple, and you would think that the loot would be really good, but no, it was actually terrible. The morning rises, and it was time to continue our adventures on. I found that cult again that had like those demonic guys, you know, praying or whatever, but this time I had good armor and good weapons. The only problem is that they don't really drop anything. They only dropped this banner, so I just took that. Oh, by the way, this is actually a portal to go to the Thalmcraft like dimension, you know, the Harry Potter and stuff. Maybe we can go there if you <coughs> hit that like button so we can continue this series, please. I found a rubber ducky spawner and I kind of just didn't know what to do with them, so I kind of killed them all. This was a terrible idea because then they started attacking me and they turned into demons and they kept on attacking me. I portaled out of there because they just kept on spawning on me and they kept on attacking me. You remember those night guys that we just killed? Well, it turns out they do drop their armors and we can put that on our workers so now they look hilarious. <laughs> Look at Dave, you can't even see his eyes. We made your mama look like some CIA agent and then swagger souls with this helmet. I was really happy of our last day adventure, so I just kept going this day as well. This weird dog with wings used to scare us, but now we are ultimate super saiyans and we crush them. Wow, this looks super suspicious again. I bet you that's just some sort of nuclear bomb. It was actually just some decent loot. Here is me killing Minecraft girlfriends. We did find a village though before the night fell. And the next day we just raided this village and abducted a child. The iron golem seemed mad that I took the children. I had to remove of all witnesses. After taking everything valuable from the village, I found another castle. You guys should just call me king of all castles now. <laughs> all these arrows in me. Oh yeah, so many of you guys asked what mod this is. This one's called Ancient Warfare, and that's also the same one with all the workers that I have in my base. I was just about to finish up my day in Portal back home when this cactus turned into some creature. I never fought a spiky cucumber before, so this was definitely an experience for me. It was day 234, and I can finally say we're gonna start working on our base. Did you know if you put rotten flesh in a furnace, you get leather? Anyway, this floor is split. On the right side, it's gonna be Harry Potter stuff, and on the left side, it's gonna be dinosaur stuff. Yeah, you heard me dinosaurs the first step in order to make dinosaurs is making something called the culture vat which turns dna into the actual dinosaurs i also spent the next two days getting the right materials in order to do this and i needed a glass that was strong enough to hold in the dinosaurs these two blocks go really well together and they create like this dinosaur feel while all that time passed i did make my first dinosaur a triceratops but i couldn't spawn it because i didn't have a cage to put him in day 237 i just mined all day and i mined all night just when i was about to go to bed some weird mom Mob thing? I've never seen this before. It was like making zombie noises, but it was no zombie. I felt kind of bad for it, but it was kind of leaving this trail behind it, so I had to kill it. The next day, I did some research, and turns out that was actually a failed dinosaur. What it means is that the culture vat, the thing that makes the dinosaurs, it can actually fail, and then it creates that thing, which is basically called a failusaurus. <laughs> yeah, I just mined and placed blocks all day. Luckily, from all my knowledge learning, I learned I needed to make a glass that was strong enough to hold in the dinosaurs. In order to make it, you need a lot of sand and then combine it with quartz that would create dense sand and then you would furnace it up like regular glass and boom reinforced glass the next day while I waited for all this glass to smell I noticed that I had a severe food problem so I started working on the cow farm on the lowest level and I wanted to make it as dark and gloomy as possible <laughs> the old black color didn't look good though so I kind of mixed it up a little bit one of my twitch chat members made a good suggestion of making the floor lava so the cows know the end is near the cage itself was nearly complete I just needed a roof and then then started to get some lava. This is gonna seriously look good. I needed to make a path between my cow farm and all the way beneath my base because that's where all the lava was. But I also had multiple buckets. This is me grabbing too many buckets of lava and then some actually going into the lava. After filling it all up, all I had to do was place in glass and I used that reinforced glass because it actually looked really good. You're probably asking how am I gonna get so many cows in here? Portal gun. It was day 241 and it was a big day. We had to get all our cows into this cow farm. I shot the other side of the portal in my 
original cow farm and just let all the cows go through. And then I killed all the remaining cows. I didn't want to spoil actually how many cows went through that portal, so I kind of clipped it a little bit. On top of that, the portal gun I used in order to move the cows was the same portal gun I used to go between my two bases. That meant I had to run all the way back to my original base because I didn't want to go through the same portal where all my cows were going through. The trip was definitely worth it because this point of view of our base was totally worth it. Oh my goodness. It was the next day and you're probably asking why are there so many cows escaping? Well, that's not true. There's actually so many cows in there that it looks like they're breaking out. The next step was actually setting up Swagger Souls as the person who's going to breed the cows and also kill them. And after doing almost a whole day of AFK farming, you can see it's actually really efficient. The day after, I started setting up some room for some furnaces because I had a lot of food, but it was all raw. And of course, I needed a lot of chest open. What the Swagger Souls? You're opening up the door! He's letting all the cows out! I forgot that these workers can open and closed doors and now he has released an army of cows on me and they're attacking me for some reason so now that swagger souls has turned against me i had to go and craft a piston so i could push the glass back in there were so many cows down here i couldn't just place the block and i couldn't even use the piston because there were so many after spending an entire day's work i was finally able to push in the glass block to push them all in look at this evil bastard's face it was his plan all along before i went to bed i decided to take all my old farms from my old base and then take them so i can put them in my new base the next day i started placing in my other farms because I wanted a little bit of everything. Yeah, so not really anything special, just normal farm stuff. The first order of day 245 was actually to kill off some cows because it was actually causing too much lag. I lost a lot of food and XP there, which was kind of sad. And then I just finished up all the rest of my farms. We also learned how to make a giant furnace. This mod was called Tinker's Mod and it required all those black blocks, so good thing I didn't make my cow farm out of it. But I had nowhere near enough, so I had to actually get clay, which was kind of a problem because there were so many mobs in the water. But I was finally able to do it. The next day, I had to smelt this clay mixture, which would turn into this black stuff, and that black stuff would help us make us this furnace. Even with 10 furnaces, it takes forever to smelt so many items, so it almost took the entire day. And boom, after a whole day of smelting and furnacing and crafting, we got a lot of these black blocks. I learned from my days of research before, it's basically just a 3 by 3 area that creates this mega furnace. The left block was actually the control block, and this is where you actually put in the ores, and then the middle one was the energy source. After putting in the lava, I also threw in a couple pieces of tin and it was actually smelting it. When it was done, there was actually melted ore in the middle of the 3x3 area, which was super cool. The only problem was that I didn't have an exit source yet, so I couldn't collect it. The next day, I learned I needed a faucet which drained the melted ore into a casket and then I can collect the ore then. This was super cool to do the first time and it looked so sick. I was confused at first because I couldn't collect it, but turns out I didn't give enough material so it couldn't form into a block. I know that now, but during the time of the recording, I didn't know that, so I was really mad at my Twitch chat. <laughs> Day 249 and it was time to go back working on my furnace and oh my god there's a giant hole in my base. So it turns out there was a water source nearby because when my miners keep on digging they don't care about anything so they just put a giant hole in my base. It took me the entire day to patch this up because it's so hard to move in water. The big day 250 we spent upgrading our furnace and cleaning it up a little bit. The taller it is the more spots of ores you can put in. And yeah it's basically finished and oh yeah all my workers somehow died. I don't understand where the workers keep going. I mean yeah they work for free but why do they have to keep dying. It's been a long time coming, but what I have here, I crafted a priest and basically the priest should resurrect everyone that has died. I just realized this means everyone who's died, even in the previous 200 days. Oh my goodness, they're all back. Ricardo, your mom, your dad, even Code Socks for one. I also put a priest downstairs to resurrect both swagger souls, but the only downside is that they lose their armor, so oof. The next day, I just had to get some chores out of the way, like I had to pack up some of the workers because I had too many of them. I also had to recraft a lot of tools because when they die, they still lose it. I also noticed that all the mining is basically done inside my base, but I couldn't put them outside because then they would just die from random mobs. Day 252, I realized I never tried out the smeltery, so I put in a lot of iron ore. The pros of this furnace it actually gives about 40% more in return, which is actually pretty awesome. I was a little bit worried that it was red, but then it turned into a white block and then I could just grab it. The only problem it has is that it can only smelt ores, not cook raw food, so that means food's gonna be a problem again. The next morning, I realized I was kind of tired of all this base stuff, so let's go going on another adventure. I killed a lot of rubber duckies, took down a ghost house, and you already know, a couple of castles. And then I just went back home. <laughs> I realized the next day we worked so hard on this portal room, but we don't actually have any portals in it. Because of some Minecraft mods, you can actually make this any size and any shape that you want to, so I'm gonna make it look really good. I want the nether portal to look like it's merged into the wall so it fits the rest of the room. And boom, it was basically done. We just had to wait for the vines to grow and maybe place a couple more stairs and slabs. The next portal I had 
had in mind was actually the aether portal what led to the minecraft heavens but i didn't have enough glowstone i tried to make it the best as i could but i really had to go into the nether in order to get more glowstone oh you guys thought we were gonna go to the nether today no 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 way we're gonna make a portal gun thing a what you must say some of you guys already know what i'm building but the others are up for a surprise just a couple more blocks and our first test subject the mushroom <laughs> up and down <laughs> just when i thought i couldn't get any better he died and test subject 2 died as well the next day i was still having a problem of my workers keep on dying even though the priest was resurrecting them they kept on losing their items so i closed them from the outside world as much as possible i put cobblestone everywhere there was no way they could escape anywhere the next three days were actually pretty boring so i'll just kind of speed run it i was basically getting as many resources as i can from my workers and helping them out also did a lot of researching like being able to upgrade my turrets in my base but i'm still nowhere near being able to craft those things day 261 and i finally grew a pair that's right i'm going right back to the nether to get some glowstone but i made a base around my nether portal as soon as i came across i made a small but protective area just so i wouldn't be attacked by pigmen with assault rifles right now well i had to leave the cave anyway because i have to go get materials getting glowstone is so scary you're so far up and one machine gun bullet boom you're dead i popped a super golden apple here because i didn't even know what these guys were they were like weird looking lava boys everything was really creepy to me i finally I got enough glowstone and I was out of there. And look who was waiting for me on the other side. It was Naruto, Nine Wings. I don't know. I don't watch anime, but I know that character, whatever. For some reason, when I mined this nether quartz, it just went back into a block, even though I wasn't using my silk touch. I think that must be a 1.7.10 thing. And now that I had the glowstone, I could actually finish up my aether portal. And let me say, this looks really, really good. Day 263 is the day I learned how to use modern day weaponry. <laughs> I was built for this. I literally had an entire inventory just for bullets and magazines. The only problem was that I didn't know how to make bullets or magazines. Twitch chat and I did a little bit of research on the guns that we couldn't make, but we did learn how to make bullets. We needed a lot of lead to make a lot of bullets, so our new furnace actually came to be useful. Just when I was about to go to bed, I saw a miner was slain by an emperor scorpion. How could that be possible? Oh my goodness, there's an emperor scorpion inside my bed! I let my workers fight for themselves because I was out of there. I was not going to fight that thing i tried to use my submachine gun on it but it turns out it's immune to range damage so i just used the portal gun to get out next day the emperor scorpion was gone but he eliminated everyone so i just had to summon another priest who summoned everyone back and i had to give everyone their armor back i went back to my furnace and i got as much lead as i could because now i just wanted to make bullets i made a lot of bullets so the next step was just to make a lot of magazines it was a blood moon this night and it was also a lightning storm so this was the first time i could actually charge up my lightning staff the storm continued throughout the entire next day you know when it's like raining out and it's cloudy and then you feel really tired and unproductive well that was kind of how today was the next seven days were really valuable to me but pretty boring to watch i finished up a path going around my mega furnace so i could quickly get all the loot i also set up turrets to protect my miners because scorpions still spawn and kill them i still needed to box in my miners every time i left so they wouldn't escape i really need a good way to travel in and out during this time i was mostly mining but i learned how to mine properly there's an item in ore spawn that destroys a huge huge chunk of area but only destroys the stone so all the ores remain this made mining for ores extremely easy here's some mining satisfaction for you day 274 is the most hurtful day in minecraft history most of the day i was mining out and even building my cage for my dinosaurs i was doing a lot of mining so i dreamed of having an amazing pickaxe like this i mined all the way till the night came which was also a blood moon and what came from the blood moon was thousands of mobs that were spawning inside my base slaughtering all my workers but they just kept on spawning and spawning and I had no idea where they were coming from but I found the problem there was a giant hole in my base that allowed mobs from the outside of my castle to just walk right in this was difficult because a lot of mobs have their own type of weapon just when I thought I was in the clear all it took was one bullet and the knockback knocking me off my pillar and falling in the giant hole I created I did die but personally I felt like I needed to survive another 25 days so I had a whole hundred days the only problem is that didn't you just die didn't you have to delete your world well since this mob pack crashes so often because there's so many mods the server automatically saves the backups once in every couple hours and when i say a couple hours that's about 10 days so during these 10 days i basically made things as safe as possible and restored everything that i lost it was day 286 and the first step was to get as much xp as possible so i could repair all my armor since i never die it's good to keep my armor in check so that doesn't break during battle i did this all night as well but it was definitely worth it at the end because now we had a full set of armor that wasn't broken the next day i realized we 
still have a serious food problem, especially if we're going to be feeding dinosaurs soon. I had a great idea by making an AFK fishing farm. That way I could get a lot of food and as well as getting enchanted books. Though I didn't know what version to make because all the 1.7.10 ones were kind of broken. And I couldn't even make the 1.14 ones because it was 1.7.10. I tried multiple different farm designs, but none of them worked. The next morning it clicked to me. This is modded Minecraft. Why am I making an AFK fish farm when I can have these workers fish for me? And just like that, I decided to make a couple fish farms. This would be so much easier because all I have to do is give them a water area in order for them to fish in. After moving some water around, I had two AFK fish farms. It was finally time to focus on the dinosaurs. I wasted a lot of my reinforced glass on random stuff, so I had to make a lot more again. Since I had to wait for that to finish, I checked up on my AFK fish farms and those were actually working. On top of that, I started smelting a lot of copper in my large furnace because I thought copper would be a nice looking block that would go good with my dinosaur theme. This furnace thing is the most satisfying thing ever. Not only did we get so much copper, it's just so cool to look at. The next day, it was time to put all these blocks into action and start building our cage for our dinosaurs. I ended up not using any of the copper blocks because they actually looked really bad. Instead, I stuck with the reinforced glass and the same blocks that I used for the floor and stuff. Before I was able to finish, a blood moon was rising, so I couldn't make the same mistake as before. I camped on top of the tower on my other base and stayed in like a one by one area. I didn't move for the entire night. We were on the big day 290 and I was nearly done with my cage. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. It kind of looks like an oof. After changing up some blocks, I still didn't like it, but who cares? It was time to spawn some dinosaurs. But before I could do that, it looks like my workers were being killed again by scorpions. All of them ended up hiding up in this corner and they weren't working, so that was a problem. I realized there weren't actually turrets down there because when I died, I forgot to replace those. The next day, of course, the first step was to set up some turrets. Back to the dinosaurs, I needed a path so I could quickly give all the dinosaurs food inside their feeder whenever they needed because if I didn't give them food, then they would turn against me and kill me. The feeder is split into two. Food for the herbivores and food for the carnivores. Sadly, the carnivores didn't take fish as a food source, so now I had so much fish and I didn't know what to do with it. I guess I'll have to give the dinosaurs beef and then I'm gonna have to eat the fish myself. Ha! <laughs> Today's the day we're gonna be spawning some dinosaurs and I was slightly disappointed that it just spawned an egg and not an actual dinosaur. I was able to spawn this little tiny bird though, which was pretty cool. And for some reason, all my workers were being killed again. Since I just had to wait for the dinosaurs to hatch or grow, I decided to give all my workers full sets of armor because I was done with all of them dying. Now they look like ultimate warriors. Since we were nearing the end of the 100 days, it was time to finish it off with an amazing boss battle. I started building the portal to the twilight dimension because I knew there were some serious bad bosses in there. I had to get a lot more flowers though, but luckily I had bone meal. The portal itself was finished, but I just wanted to do a little more decoration before I went in. My whole portal room was seriously coming together now. The next five days would be extremely dramatic, so it was crucial that I was prepared physically and mentally, and my inventory was in check. I guess here's one step for mankind. Right off the bat, I knew this was a good spawn because I saw this giant amazing tower right next to me. There was a lot of this like green particle stuff, and if you got too close, you couldn't actually break any blocks, so you couldn't break in. My IQ though is over 9,000, so I decided to build up and then just jump in. I knew this was going to be difficult because there was already a flying book attacking me. The closer I got inside, I realized that they don't take any melee damage, so that meant I had to use only my submachine gun. Let me rephrase that statement. I'm definitely not complaining. I love using my submachine gun. The mobs wouldn't stop spawning though, so I was spraying and spraying. The zombie effects when you kill them was insane. Like, it was like their whole body parts were blown up. The whole place was kind of like a maze. There was a lot of dead ends like these libraries. Oh, and if you're worried that I was gonna run out of ammo, I have so much ammo. I'm like the Terminator baby. After countless room searching, I realized all I had to do was go up and there was the Lich King thingy. Bro, I was freaking the freak out, man. He wasn't even taking damage. He was summoning like minions and stuff. I was spraying him and spraying him down and down. He wasn't taking any damage and I was taking damage though. Eventually, I realized these tiny little shields he has on him protects him from all this stuff. And finally, when I knocked down his last shield, he was all open business, baby. I sprayed him down. I hold left click and there was a lot of lag and then he just died. That was actually a really dramatic fight, but it was not over yet. I still had to escape. I couldn't just break out. I had to find like some sort of exit and I didn't know where that was. As you guys know, my IQ is over 9,000. So I just took a couple ladders and bada beam, bada boom, I was outside. I still had a little bit of time left. So I kind of continued on this adventure because there was a lot of cool things around here. I found this really cool like mushroom village. I don't know. There wasn't anything like super scary in it, but it looked really cool. With only a couple minutes remaining, I did come across the snake pit. Congratulations, you made it to day 300. If you made it this far, you don't deserve not one, not two, but three gold stars. But seriously, guys, I really want to continue this series and I know you guys want it too. So please hit that like button so we can continue this. If you haven't already, I am streaming on Twitch right now and all my prime subs will get a Minecraft server.
server. Just remember to join my Discord in order to get the IP. Oh, my game crashed.